Cheers. Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches. Retro Review, episode 56. Today is another special episode because it is a request by our Patreon, Eric, who requested Sorority Boys. And I'm not entirely sure why. And I am so sorry, Eric, but we're going to read this movie to Phil. <laughs> Maybe that's what he wanted. Sorority Boys. First things first. Shout out to our Patreon supporters, like Eric. $5 a month gets you early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing parties. And $100, I think we might have to up it. If I you mean, guys are giving us sorority boys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Eric's been very good to us, and so I will review whatever piece of shit movie he wants us to do. <laughs> second thing second, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Go to trywink.com slash moviebitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. I will say, I was reading some reviews online, and a lot of them oh said... Just get drunk, then you'll like it. That was a quite a, a fair bit of the reviews. I don't know if I agree with that, but I just thought I'd point it out. I think it would have helped. Okay, so third things third, make sure to subscribe, share, ho, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and click the thumbs up button, comment. What did you think about this movie? Did no, you like it? I don't think you should think... watch it. I'm putting it out there. You... I don't think we. I would Ooh. recommend people watch this. Not the not our review. Oh, but if someone has seen it. Sure, if you've already seen it, but I would I would say if you haven't seen it since it came out, don't. Things have changed. I don't think yeah. that we should be watching this movie in 2021. <laughs> I think no. this was the it, wrong time and place to watch this movie. <laughs> yes. You know, it's funny. I was just having that conversation. I was talking to someone about what we've been doing with the retro reviews and like fixing the Rotten Tomatoes scores and stuff like that. And it was an interesting conversation about how a lot of times there's conversations about books and right. how when you read them at different points in your life, they have different meaning or different things oh, and yeah. you interpret it differently. But for some reason, that conversation about film isn't really the same. Like, I mean, people I do, don't seem to take film as seriously. Perhaps, I feel like perhaps reading a book is slightly more personal. It's a thing that you're doing... Sure. By yourself, you're well, you imagine imagining it. it, you're, you know, creating the world in your mind. There's something a little more personal about that. But I do have that conversation at times. Like, I think, oh, yeah. personally, if you watch The Office, The American Office, you have to watch it before you go into the workplace setting. You have to watch it like college where you're like, those fucking losers. I'm never going to be them. Anyway, I mean, this is a hot take because I know people love The Office, but when you go back and watch it, it is just fucking depressing. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. But I, I have had that conversation there and there is a time and a place, you know, there is a way to review films that you go, well, that didn't really hold up. But wow, at the time it was so, like I'm, right. I'm reading this book right now called Best Movie Year Ever, about 1999. Ooh. And I, I was oh. like, oh, was 99 really? Cause, cause what I was like uh, middle school, you know, I was like primed. I was going to the movie yeah. every weekend, twice a weekend, all of it. And I, and I go, well, everyone loves movies when they're in middle school. You know, it's, you go to the movies, but no, 99 was special. What movies were there? The Matrix, Mummy, Fight Club, 10 Things I Hate About You, She's All That, uh, Election, Virgin Suicides, Rushmore. Like, the list goes on. Like, I was just like, holy fucking shit. Wow. I mean, Phantom Menace. Yeah. You know, it was a big deal, but whatever. No one cared. Um, sure. There's, like, way well, more that I'm not thinking of. And so it was interesting to read it now going, oh, and the time and the place of it all. And how a lot yeah. of times when art is really forward thinking, it ends up being the most dated. And I'm not saying yes. that that is what the case in Sorority Boys at all, but- Oh no. <laughs> like Will and Grace, at the time, so forward thinking, Sex and the City, so incredibly new. And you look back and you go, oh boy, that's so bad now. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes that yes. happens. It's true. I have a theory that there's like a best year of a decade for music as well. And actually 99 is my argument is the best year for music. So I think creatively perhaps it was. And then for music, I would say 2006 is also is the, the best year of the... I'm, I'm really 2000s. bad at music years, but I will take your word for it. Well, I wonder though, what year, like what year of, of the 2000, 2010s, whatever that, the early... Aughts. Whatever that decade is, I wonder what the best year for movies was. Probably not 2006. Probably not. <laughs> well, it certainly wasn't 2002, the year that Sorority Boys came out. Oh boy, okay, so we gotta, we gotta talk about it, we gotta talk about it. So Sorority yep. Boys, yep. I'll say this up front, 
a genre I never liked. No. Hornball, male centric, female gazy, dumb, broad no. comedies. Uh, I, you know, Van Wilder comes to mind that people really like that movie, right? That was, it's, it was never my thing. What can I say? So I wasn't primed I to love Animal this. Animal House? Animal House, I think going back, there's things that are problematic when you watch it now, but it started the genre. It had sure. a great script. It was, that has more of like the outsiders turning them on their heads, right. underdogs. This was just three assholes being disgusting assholes and teaching women how to be women and then being disgusting assholes. Yeah. It was teaching women to be more like men. Right. And okay, so I, I had a lot of problems with this movie. I'll just uh, say this. Uh, uh -huh. Three sorority guys, the plot, three sorority guys, yes. happenstance, things happen. They have to dress in drag and join the lame sorority house and pretend to be women for a period of time. And it's the plot of Some Like It Hot, but with none of the stakes or cleverness or all of the above. Continue. I hated the gender politics, obviously. It was just everything was so poorly written, so cliched, so basic. Lazy. You know, of course, the, 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 the houses are called cocks and dogs. And the other one was, right. was tri pie. Right, you know, oh, right. it's three pies because it's all vaginas. You know, it's just like everything is the most juvenile, basic. Yeah. 38 seconds into this movie. Guilty. You taught the KOK handshake to a girl. Dude, what were you thinking? I was like, oh, everything having to do with this movie was done by a man. 100%. And then the credits rolled at the end, and I was like, oh, there's a woman. Costumes. Okay, the men continue now. It was just like, that. Was, it was... Speaking of costumes, okay, uh, there's a few and far between positives. Um, okay. I liked the reminder of those, like, half handkerchiefs. Remember that in the early aughts? Probably not, because you're a boy. It was like a handkerchief, but it wasn't a square. It was just a triangle. Oh, I can just throw that on. I don't even have to fold it or tie it or anything. Oh my God, this is fabulous. I'm just gonna throw this little scarf on and fabulous. That was very early 2000s. Brought me back to a special time. So I like that. Um, Good, great. There was a lioness skirt at some point that, that one of the guys oh. was wearing that I was like, I could fuck with that. I enjoyed the powder puff girl memorabilia that was littering the sorority house for reasons that escaped yes. me. Powder puff, Left curtains, by the seniors. calendar, sweatshirt, chip bowl. It was, I was like, what kind of deal did they make with Cartoon Network? It was very strange. <laughs> I think that might be it. I yeah. think that might be it. Um, everything was absolutely 100% from a male point of view. Yeah. And it was even more nefarious because the main girl, whose name I don't know because uh, I didn't care and they also didn't really endear her to me enough to remember, was this like yeah. pseudo feminist who's trying to, right. and no one cares, you suck, you're, you're too smart, right. blah, blah, you're a piece of trash. You're enabling the same misogynistic mores that kept women in bondage for the past 5,000 years. They do bondage. <laughs> this movie made me sad. It made me really sad the way that it treated women the way that yeah. women were objectified, they were secretly videotaped while having sex. They were right. forced to walk down a hall of a frat house and sang a song about being a dirty slut and a walk of shame. And then a Polaroid was taken of them and put up on a wall. They were, there was talk of roofies and day rape. A woman was convinced because of her poor eyesight that she couldn't tell a man was showering with her. I had a lot of questions. <laughs> in the butt. Sorry. <laughs> it made me really sad. At one point they were going to throw the main girl off the boat because she was, I think they might have used the word uppity. I don't know. There was a word like she's snooty. She had a lot of she, attitude or she's got she's a lot difficult. of something. You see that one over there? Yeah. yeah. Got a real attitude on her. What do you say we play a little dog catcher? <gasps> For old times, eh? Basically, yeah. there was a disgusting man who was like, hey, bitch, like, slap your ass, wanna fuck me? And she was like, get off of me, gross person. And then they would threaten to throw her overboard for that. And I was just like, wow, this is making me sad. 
what's frustrating me, there's a, there's a bunch of these movies, and I feel like I actually vaguely remember seeing this movie, not in theaters when it came out, but like, you know, on TV. I did not, just for the record. What's problematic for me with all of these types of movies, and this reminded me too of um, Everybody Wants Some. Oh. Remember that terrible movie that we watched? I mean, I'll say this. I hated that movie and it because it was trying to be like at least this movie was like we're trash don't worry about it it's fine yes yes don't take this seriously yes. oh so what really frustrates me about these movies is right. that you can tell that the men who wrote and made it think they're so great for doing the absolute bare minimum well that was the moral of the end of the movie we apologized yeah. and were decided to be nice to women that are less than ideal in our eyes. We decided Aren't to we not heroes? rape you. I mean, holy shit. This movie was a yikes. Like, I just wanted to keep sending you that emoji of like, ee, 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 ee. <laughs> every scene I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I think what honestly was most upsetting to me was the end. I mean, we're, we're, spoiler alert or whatever. So the, the one, the, the blonde, was he blonde? He, blonde as, as a woman? Well, I guess as a woman he was blonde. Okay, They were yes. all brunettes as men. Yeah. Yes. With the little bro who was like so crazy and it was too much of a character. When they roofied each other? Whatever. They roofied each other. And then he's like, but, but nothing happened, right? And then they have that flashback of like, what I was, I was assuming alluding to oh. rape. That was at the end? I might have spaced out. Did yeah. that happen? Nothing happened. Right? Huh? And then it was like, no. And then the other one has this look of horrified, like, oh, I feel like I was taken advantage of. And I was like, oh. So, so you're it's okay upset. for you to feel like you were taking it. Fuck you, asshole. Exactly. Oh, you're upset that you might have done something with this guy that you would, your little brother that you taught this to, but it's fine for you to have roofied and raped, uh, assuming other women. Like, f fully fuck you. And Irredeemable. Secretly, I secretly videotaped them while having sex. He had a secret camera. Like, I can't. This movie was insane. Well, and then the other fucking lead character, Dave, who's like supposedly which redeemed at the end. I don't. Which one's Dave? The pretty one. The brun. The yeah, the pretty one. Barry Watson. Um, he was the one that pinned the fucking Polaroid of the Walk of Shame girl, it's, while the other was, one jumps out of the window. They were all horrible people who did horrible things. And we're horrible by the end. We should not recommend this film. I feel like people should just go watch Promising Young Woman instead because, I mean, actually, honestly, if you did a double feature of this movie and then watch Promising Young Women, it would be harrowing. <laughs> it would be like, I mean, a study. It might actually be interesting. I mean, I've seen them both. I didn't watch them back to back. You got it. That might take me off the edge, but go watch Promising Young Woman. I love that. I don't think that I could recommend this movie in any way, shape, or form. Um, I'm so sorry, you know, Eric. It doesn't hold up. Maybe you haven't seen it since yeah. it came out. I don't know. Maybe it holds a special place in your heart. I just really, I felt so bad. So the lead woman, I felt the most bad for her. She is tricked into becoming best friends with Barry Watson, who is wearing Joe Dirt's wig, but it's brunette. I didn't know what was going on with that. I mean, she had a full mullet and no one was talking about it. It was wild. <laughs> Word to believe this woman is so dumb. She cannot, I mean, as a person who wears contact lenses who cannot see without them, do you think you would not notice in a shower that you were showering with someone of the opposite sex? <laughs> and that if their boner so pushed against your ass and you said, stop poking me. What are we doing? Is she that dumb? I am so sad for her that she was tricked into this situation. You are correct. As a person who is legally blind without my contacts, no, I could still tell, I, I would think. Well, if I wasn't expecting it, like if I wasn't like, what's that person's sex? I don't think I would necessarily. Okay. But then yes, if I, you know what a boner feels like. <laughs> Did I think it was absurd and silly that he managed to make Soap tits. Tits. And then a soap boner. You know, on some level, I was like, that's weird. 
I'm very upset by what's happening, but that was a weird thing that happened. This is a surreal, strange sure. thing that happened. That was at least, I mean, at least sure. it was something, I don't know, I'm not approving of it at all, but I was just like, what are these soap tits? <laughs> What? Okay, I mean, sure, why course. not? But then they cut it in between him modeling his soap tits off of her, you know, real boot. Like, it was like yeah. this objectification lens of, ooh, look at her wet tits in the shower. Ooh. It was just like a five-year-old boy made it, you know? What was that shitty movie that we watched recently of um, love, marriage, and disasters or whatever the fuck, right? Love, Where you're just weddings, like, and it, disasters? Yeah. Yeah, and disasters. It had a similar juvenility, I don't know if that's a word, juvenileness to it. The way that these male filmmakers portrayed women while then being like, but look, they learn and they get better and they're not assholes anymore. Aren't we good? And I'm like, no, yeah, you're not. They're they still were, assholes. They're just the they bare minimum all, of not assholeness. By the first five minutes, all three characters were irredeemable in my eyes. So I was like, whoa, yeah. bold move, movie. Oh, that's not the point. We let one dog in. Next thing you know, we'll have three. Okay. Dog catcher! We haven't talked about the cast. <laughs> Barry Watson no. is our lead, the pretty one, uh, quote unquote. Um, right. He's most famously from A Very Nutty Christmas as the Nutcracker. <laughs> He's also in, you know, Teaching Mrs. Tingle and Seventh Heaven, among other things. And then we get, you know, character actor Harlan Williams, who I think is most famous in my eyes as the cop in Dumb and Dumber who drinks the piss bottle oh. and makes that face. I feel like that's, he's like in everything. Like he just shows up to be that guy that's in stuff. But I think that for me, that's the, that's the uh, pop culture event that I think of when I think of him. Also, fun fact, I looked it up. Uh, he was 40 at the time of filming this, so that's fun. Oh my god. Oh my I mean, god. I know he's supposed to be the John Belushi character that's been in college for nine years, but that's not 40. Oh, oh that one was. Got you. Yes. Roberta. Got you. Wow, I didn't remember that name. I will say, because Roberta was actually my favorite character. Of the three, he was the most redeemable. And he had Kathy Griffin's wig, yeah. so I was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but but he seemed like a not Rob Reiner, Rob Rob Schneider. Rob Rob Schneider. He was kind of like that, the the budget version. The whole cast, the three of them all, all reminded me of someone or a couple people, but if you just like smeared Vaseline on the lens, you know, it was like the budget version. They're of, all people oh, that have been in stuff that you vaguely recognize from television. The third guy is Michael Rosenbaum, who was like Lex Luthor on Smallville. That's what everybody loves him from. I know him from this yeah. TV land show that I think I was the only viewer of called Impastor, where he takes over the life of a, through a series of a a unfortunate events, he takes over the life of a priest who also happens to be gay and it's a small town and it's, I don't think it was good, but I watched it for some reason. He, as an actor, was, was mm -hmm. giving it his all. Um, yes. I thought of the performances, he was mm -hmm. really trying his gall darndest to make it work. So I'll, get, I'll yeah. give him that. That's something I can- Sure. <laughs> Mother's ass. Why do you let them treat you like this? I was so sad wow. because, okay, so we know from the poster, they're gonna be in drag, haha, -ha, that'll be the joke. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited. There's gonna be a makeover, montage. It'll be so fun. But the no, plot is, the plot is there. Now, I also was not in a sorority or a frat, so you might have to fill me in on some of these details. The plot is they are the social directors of the mm -hmm. frat and have a safe in their frat bedroom full of cash that right. the weird president guy who's doing like a Muppet voice. Then there's a story of the 88 cocktail cruise. Those boys decided to, to skimp. And seems to be like <laughs> Buzz all grown up from Home Alone. I don't know. <laughs> Steals it, right? Like that guy was, I mean, he had like Johnny yeah. Bravo's hair. I was like, what are these it was, choices? It was a lot of choices. So yeah. many choices. So he steals the money because he doesn't like them. They're promptly kicked out, unceremoniously kicked out of the frat 
And oh no, because his, Barry Watson's father, is gonna get him a job? And if he's not part of the frat anymore, his dad isn't gonna hook him up. Well, the only way that they can all get good jobs from the booze crews is if the alumni get laid by the Tribe supposedly- Tribe right. They like, it was, this was nefarious. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that kid of yours anyway? Let's get this over with so I can go Tom catting. They're gonna get their dads and their dad's friends laid by these college girls and therefore they will get them good jobs because they fucked off in college and didn't get good grades. But there's a tape, thank God, he has a secret recording device where he scams on women and records them without their knowledge while having sex with them. Right. That they have the Johnny... Um, is it Johnny Bravo? Who is that? Who is that Cartoon Network guy with the hair? Johnny Bravo? Johnny Bravo. I think Johnny Bravo, yeah. Did, did the monkey? I think so. Yeah, okay. Do the monkey with me. Come on. Because Johnny Bravo president um, is on the tape also stealing, so they can prove it. But They presume. They presume. They presume. But because, I mean, I'm making this sound more complicated than this, but it wasn't that complicated. There was no stakes. Because they're kicked out. Now, why do they have to be in drag? Just so they have a place to stay? So they the went sorority. into drag so that they could get back into the fraternity right. at the all-girls party where it's open to women. Any any girl can Except come in. Except for them, because they're fugly. Well, no, they got they made their way oh, in, right. but then they, they got did. kicked out. They kicked out. Because they were dogs, and they got dumped at the steps of the DOG house. Right. But then why did they then, stay in drag? Because they needed a place to stay? Because they needed a place to stay because they didn't have the room in the fraternity anymore and they had food and um, plot. Oh, right. But to get back to my original point, uh -huh. they're like, oh, we have to get in drag. We're in drag. Oh, right. Boom. Like there was yeah. no fun. How do I do my makeup? Who styled these wigs? They mentioned later that they got the clothes at Goodwill. There's no fun right. montage. There's Shopping nothing. Montage. There's no, hey, uh, Harvey Firestein, my brother, can you put me in drag? You know, there's nothing. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make, make me, me a, a match. match. <laughs> oh, now you look like Bob Streisand. <laughs> this is like the absolute opposite of Tu Wang Fu. 100%. Three friends in drag. Going right. across the world, bringing joy and magic of, of, of drag and, and, you know, Fabulosity. being different. Positivity, Fabulosity. happiness, empowerment. Yep. They empower all the women in the town in that movie as well. And you could look at it as, right. oh, these men, you know, w whether they're queer or not, are coming in to, to teach the women how to be women. But it is subtler than that. It is more important than that. It is more thoughtful than yes. that. <laughs> Absolutely. This was just, you're French and have a mustache and underarm hair? Shave it, then men will think you're hot. Wow. I, the mustache was in a way, maybe this is because it was like in 720p. At first I kept being like, does she have a mustache? Like I was like, is there a milk mustache? What's she drinking? What's sure. like I, I sure. couldn't fathom what was happening. And then it was just, she's French, so right. she, she's hairy. That was it. I, I am an exchange from France, no? The drag element yes. was not for, was not fun. It was not no. for a purpose. It was, it was out of necessity and they were ashamed of it. It was and almost like the Scarlet Letter. That. It was like the Scarlet Letter. Yes. Like they were forced to wear the shame of being a woman on them. Yes. And oh boy, didn't they get to learn a lesson? Isn't that fun to watch? And I was like, absolutely not. I hate all of them. No. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's like, well, fuck you, movie, cool. like for them. Oh, God, it really sucks being a woman. How do you let them treat you like this? And it's like, well, I don't want to have this conversation Systemic anymore. Systemic, societal. It's 2020. Well, I mean, I guess it was 2002, it was 2002, not 2021. We have to give it some leeway. It was 2002. So, you know, we're talking at it from a different lens. But also, uh, this movie is not, not it. Also, I feel terrible for Main Girl... She seems to be at least bi curious, and the movie does not handle right. it in a way that is any in any way interesting or thoughtful. It's just nope. like I'm so attracted to you, 
person. I must know you're a man underneath. There was like a weird, there was that, right, that right. thing, I feel like in the aughts where any movie, and this doesn't really count, but any movie that involved gay characters was like, I'm gay for you. You're my soulmate. So mm. like, remember that movie, Imagine Me and You, Hyper no. Parabo, is it? Anyway, that was very like, I was- Broke back I, mountain though. Yeah, it was like, I wasn't a lesbian until I met you, my soulmate. So that's okay. It's about love. It's just, if I could be with a man, I would. It's just that you're my soulmate. Like it was very that. <laughs> so yes. that was such well, a thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I felt um, really bad later when she was just like, I'm really confused. And like, I almost wanted it to end with her like coming out and being like, I, you yes. somehow through this series of events, you're gross and an asshole. I found that I am attracted to women, perhaps men too, but that I found out something about my sexuality and I am gonna go try other things and fuck you because you're gross and various other things. I wish that had been the end of the movie. <laughs> There was just so well, many instances of her being so moronic. Hey, how does, yes. I love when you braid my hair. You have a sense of your own physical body when he's painting her toenails and it's just glop. And then she rubs it. Oh, can you do it again? I'm just like, why is she like a four year old? What are we doing? She was supposedly the one that was having the whole conversation of like, you know, she's passing out the pamphlets or whatever. And it's like, right, empowerment. I mean, that was know. also frustrating where it was yeah. like, it reminded me of my least favorite part of Legally Blonde, where there's like the stereotypical feminist who, you know, it's right. like the man hating, you know, like, yeah, exactly. And it's like, oh, we're doing that. But then they drop that pretty much immediately. And oh, then yeah. she's just the incompetent loser who doesn't know how to do anything. And she can't tell the difference between anyone or anything, apparently. Um, even when they're kissing, I'm like, you know if you're kissing a man with stubble, even if there's makeup on it. What is it like to kiss a boy? Okay, well, first of all, they don't tell you about the stubble. <laughs> there's no Adam's apple, uh, right. you know, aware. Maybe she has facial blindness as well as legal blindness. Well, and that was, again, what was just so frustrating for me uh, was their depiction of women in general. Yeah. Whereas like all of the tripies, they kept having these cutaways to them or whatever. Something would happen and then they would just be like, oh, I'm, I'm dumb and ditzy. I'm just gonna keep going. Oh my God, the sprinklers. Why are they laughing? Why are they cheering? Oh, they were, know. yes, they were also like, morons. But not even just like, like fuck you movie. someone who's like, like I don't even say that as like, oh, they weren't book smart. I say that as a person who lives in the world. Why are you acting like a moron? Yeah. You know when you're, yeah, that was... you have nail polish all over your toes. Are you numb? Like, do you not feel, <laughs> like there's just that where you're like, oh my God, this is so incredibly yeah. idiotic. Yep. And all of the women are one dimensional. There's the French girl, there's yeah. the giant right. girl who's tall. There's Heather Matarazzo who has a weird voice. Some guy put this on my desk in class today. I am not deaf. Oh my God, you know how like girls are just like, oh my God, will you wash my hair? Like there was so many weird stuff in this movie where I'm like, I mean, I know not all women are the same and people have different experiences, but I've never asked a friend of mine to sexily wash my hair in a group shower. Uh, yeah. Maybe people do, maybe people do. Maybe she was expressing her feelings to her. Maybe she was like, hey, will you wash my hair sexily right. in oh, the shower? Wanna, maybe, yeah. that was, maybe that was the case, maybe that was the case. I don't know, the movie didn't present it that way. It just presented it as, here's no. a series of events where Barry Watson can be turned on by her and thinking that, you know, her not, her being completely unaware to the fact that also their faces look the same. I was so confused. I was just like, that's clearly that person. What are we doing? Sometimes I also, wish- Also horrible boy haircut, awful. Oh, all of them were awful. Well, Michael Rosenbaum had to shave his head because he plays Lex Luthor on Smallville. And contractually, he couldn't have his hair grown out. He had to keep it shaved. So they put him in this awful wig. But he had a um, girl wig on most of the movie, so right, it, didn't, right. it didn't matter. Oh, to go back to your question about the, the general plot. I mean, obviously, we all can just assume that no, this plot is not... Um, Sound? Legitimate. What was I going to say? Um, yeah, sound. <laughs> likely or, or reasonable. Unlike um, a duck's ass, but I can it's not say, watertight. <laughs> no. But as treasurer of a fraternity, I did not have a safe 
in my room filled with everyone's money. That was so weird. In cash. And I was like, are they drug dealers? Like, I genuinely was like, what's this? And also you're opening the <laughs> yeah. safe right in front of like this weird threesome that's happening. It just seemed strange. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. Yes. I'm very confused. And does he check it every morning? It seems like you could have a bank account or something that would be more safe than secure than just having stacks of a quarter million dollars a or whatever safe, in cash. Just a safe that has a key, not not like a combo. Not even that was a yeah. weird too. Yeah, strange, uh -huh. strange happenings. But yeah. the soundtrack, I mean, it was a really bringing me back, bringing me back to a time and place. I was like, oh shit, I remember this song. Yes, that was another. I don't know if I positive. actually really noticed much. There was a lot of songs in there. Um, and also, Mark Mothersbaugh of Devo fame did the score. I was shocked. Wow. Huh. <laughs> when the credits came up, I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I mean, he is famous for doing scores of movies, but I was just like, this? I did laugh once. Okay. Blonde one. I didn't learn any of their names. Blonde one has no. come back from a night of both roofing and being roofied and right. wanders back to the sorority house and um not kathy griffin is like what's that on your skirt and it's like dried cum uh gum or something yeah what flavor was it big juicy cock that did make me laugh <laughs> that was the only sure. time i laughed <laughs> Just, it was like a oh it was a crafted joke that was like Sure, sure. It wasn't necessarily yeah. pointed at anyone. It was just fun. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I didn't hate the dildo fight because it was stupid. And it wasn't, like, stupid to the point of I sexism, mean, per se. I guess. They have, a like, a dedicated, like, trebuchet to hurl dildos at the oh, well, that was house. Um, so I thought that was, you know. And then there's sort of a, a moment with Heather Matarazzo... Where she like finds it and is Oh, where she was like, oh, I'm going to keep this one. Titillated. And I was like, I hope you wash it. But also, I thought maybe that would be a nice moment for her to be like, oh, I, I, I don't need a fucking man. I, found, I can pleasure myself. Something. Sure. Some, give me something, sure. movie. Something. something to hang on to. <laughs> yes. We have to win a, a football match to prove ourselves. That, that was a long scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah, long scene. Oh my god, right, where each one of... I mean, that actually did make me laugh a little bit, where they were just beating the shit out of them. And I was like, what is this nonsense? I was excited, because they like basically curb stomp blonde one. <laughs> and I was like, yay! I mean, but not for why the movie wanted me to, but I was like, yeah, fuck that guy. He's a fucking asshole. Like, fully unredeemable villain. A villain. You know what else I laughed at? And this is really scraping the barrel. At the end of when, um, when the people that kept driving by and shouting, like, fat ass or whatever, right? Fat ass. They crash. I, I, I did laugh at that as well. <laughs> the way it was cut. But then in the next scene, there's an ambulance that they paid to have going by. And I was like, <laughs> the movie was like, oh no. And then there's the ambulance going to go get those people. They had to pay for that. That's expensive. I remember breaking down scripts. You have to pay for a fucking stunt person. And I think it's like a whole, that was expensive just to have that little background joke. And it made me laugh. It's the first girl I met I can really talk to. Maybe I should just tell her. No. Not after what we've been through, man. Come on. I did on some level enjoy that at a certain point, blonde one, because he keeps getting, he, he's like, his self-esteem is getting more and more degraded as the film goes on. Yes. People keep calling him fat, even though he seems to be the thinnest one, but whatever. They keep calling him. It was like him, it was fat ass. It was literally like he had a big. fat ass. Oh, you have a fat juicy ass. Juicy butt. You know, yeah. and I did on some level enjoy that at a certain point, he just started like sucker punching people. Watch it, dog. Watch it, plastic tits. <laughs> like, he was just like, fuck you. Well, that was the walk of shame, right? I was waiting for him to take the camera and like break it and tear down all of the pictures of the women and burn them. But something, no, you know. Something. Or that the movie made some comment on how their fathers, <clears throat> you know, were so horrific and therefore it, it bled down and I'm gonna really try and change this pattern, this horrible pattern that is obviously um, going right. through. 
some something thoughtful. I mean, that scene on the boat was harrowing. I was like, this is a horror film. I feel like I'm watching Taken yes. and they're gonna start bidding on who gets to take the, them home. It was horrifying. I have 50,000, 50,000. Also, again, like the way that the movie treated women was so frustrating where it was like, it ends and there's the tripies, you know, burnt, sunburnt to a crisp. You look so tan. <laughs> Thanks. So the takeaway from this movie is supposed to be that like, we have to treat women who are smart and right. different right. well, but the dumb, sexy women that, that can't think or do anything, they're still so shallow and they'll just be on the boat right. being like, oh, you look so tan. Oh, you look so skinny. Like, fuck you, you know? Yeah. That's, it's frustrating. Yeah, so, I mean, and this is coming from someone whose favorite movie is Sound Like It Hot. Uh, this did right. not work in every way that that movie is perfectly written. Well, and there's a there's an innocence to Sound Like It Hot. They, they can't cross the line because it came out in 1959, and they don't really try to cross a right. line too much. You know, they're not showering with them and roofing them right. and filming them without their consent. Like, it doesn't go there. You know, of course, rom-coms usually are, oh, this man in some way tricked me into into loving him, right? That's that's pretty standard. But with all the other things, too, this was um, this was hard to watch. And yeah. oh, and then in the last scene, when they put the main girl, again, whose name I don't know, um, like in a push-up bra at the end, I was like, wow. But yeah. he still hasn't brushed I mean, his it, hair. No. Like, his hair is still, okay. Right? Great. Awful, yeah. I was thinking I would rewatch House Bunny mm. because that is kind of a I similar vibe of like that. I well, Anna Ferris can Anna Fer I mean, honestly turn any piece of turd into a sparkling gem. Absolutely. I honestly, the fact that she made overboard work, I was like, good for you. And some good some people you. can really do that. Uh, it's amazing. Sure, but I remember really liking House Bunny, and it was a similar kind of vibe, but it was a lot more like female empowerment from another. Right. You're know, like, no, we're gonna, you know, it's still a lot of that same like, no, oh, we're in the loser house, and I don't really need that conversation these days. But I guess there's a way that you could do it and have it be nice. There is a way to do it where they feel like society is telling them they're the loser house, but they then, in turn, right. in a thoughtful way, find that they are enough. They've empowered themselves. Something. And I'm not saying Sorority Boys needs to be some feminist piece of filmmaking. There was just so no. many unredeemably horrible things that were happening that I was just like, oh boy, yikes. So yeah, I would not, again, go watch Promising Young Woman. Do not watch this unless you want to do a very, very uh, deep and American disturbing studies, gender American studies, studies paper. Double feature about it might be interesting, but there is there is something interesting about how this was this was just so incredibly fine in two thousand two. I probably wouldn't have liked this movie in two thousand two, but I don't think I would have particularly batted an eye at what was happening. It's interesting to at least see how far we've come with what we'll uh, yeah. you know tolerate and abide. And I'm glad that twenty years later, you know, we're saying this is absolute garbage. Don't waste your time. It was just so misogynistic. In, yeah. in, in the filmmaking of it, the lens through in which these way. men in ev in created every this. single way. And yep. like I said, it was even more nefarious because they attempted to insert a feminist message that was so right. cliched. That, that teacher yep. that's like the kooky feminist teacher. Right. Ugh. It was just like the bare minimum. Oh, and he's so scared to be in this class full of women, you know, because they all hate him because he's a man. I'm like, go fuck yourselves. Well, and we don't need to get into, I was very, I was wondering, I was confused how they got, you know, new school IDs as women, all of the above, you know, why they weren't required to sign any sort of paper. You know, we, we, we can move on. It's a dumb movie. But I was like, wait, they're just going to start showing up to class as a different person? Well, he didn't though, but I don't know. Anyway. Quick oh. change of makeup. I'm in the closet. It was super yes. bad. I'm in the closet. I'm out of the closet. It was very quick. If they had done more That's fun, true. there's there's a fun movie in here somewhere. It's just not this at all. So I would say don't rec don't recommend it. I'm sorry, Eric. Perhaps you wanted us to have this deep and thoughtful conversation about feminism and you know the lens and the male gaze. I don't know, but there you have it. Yep, <laughs> that's what you got. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>